Jenny Gypsy. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Giants of Savannah, habitat of your jealous zoo. My name is Randall, and up here I have Tucker with me. We're two of the elephant zoologists here at the zoo. You're just in time for our 1.30 keeper chat, so if you want to stick around for a few minutes and learn some fun facts about our elephants, feel free. Just a reminder to keep those masks on and try to keep six feet away between you and other groups so we can all socially distance here and be safe as cases are on the rise. So coming down here first, we have Jabu. He is our four-year-old. He just turned four in May. He is our youngest and smallest elephant at four years old and 2,800 pounds. Following right behind him is his mom, Malilo. Also following her is Congo. And then all the way back there at the, at the tower you see on the left is Jenny, the one swinging her tail. She is our oldest and largest elephant at 43 years old and 10,500 pounds. Next to her is her best friend, Gypsy. And then those other two coming down here, the one on the left is Zola. And then the one that's a little muddy on the right there is Combo. So we have seven elephants out here, and then in this habitat we have our eighth elephant, Tendaji. A common question we get today is, why is Tendaji separate from everyone else? So he is about a 17-year-old male. Naturally, once males reach about the age of 8 to 10, the female groups will actually kick them out of the herd, and they'll kind of live solitary lives, or they might bunch up with other males, and kind of lose bachelor groups. So he's pretty natural. it's pretty natural for him to be on his own there. We'll put him in with some of the younger girls every so often in hopes of breeding one day. But naturally you would find a herd of just females with young males like a Jabu and the males would be separate. So do you guys know if these are African or Asian elephants? African. African, yes. Once you cross that tunnel, everything on this side of the zoo would be found in Africa. So these are African elephants and a couple ways you can tell that, that they are different from the Asian species is if one, if you look across their back, they have a nice dip in the back, where it's the Asian species, it's nice and rounded. Another way you can tell is if you look at those big old ears, they're bigger or about the si same size as their actual head, whereas Asian elephants, their ears are a lot smaller. Those ears, if you kind of use your imagination, they kind of roughly resemble the shape of the continent of Africa, whereas in the Asian species, their ears kind of roughly represent the shape of the country of India. They'll use those big old ears on hot days to flap them. By flapping them, they're sending blood through the network of veins and arteries on the back of those ears, and it cools the blood and recirculates it into their body. On a, on a hot day, just by flapping their ears, they can cool themselves up to 10 degrees, so it's a super efficient way to cool themselves down. Another way you can tell that these are African elephants is if you look at some of the females here, they have tusks. In Asian elephants, only the males have tusks, the females do not. And then the last way to tell is if you get a good look at the ends of their trunks. A Jabu down here swimming, you might see his trunk kind of up close. They have two finger-like projections, whereas Asian elephants only have one. They'll use these fingers to pick up something as small as a raisin, where they can wrap that whole trunk around something as big as a thousand pound log. Wow. In just their trunk alone, they have over a hundred thousand muscle fibers. So it's a super powerful appendage they have, almost like a fifth limb. A behavior you might see them doing with their trunks. When they were all back there, there's a mud there's a mud hole back there. So like Kamba there, she's all muddy. So a behavior they'll do with their trunk is what we call wallowing. Well they'll take dirt or mud or sub any kind of substrate that they can find and they throw it onto themselves. Does anyone have any guesses on what that might do? Cool them off? Yeah, a little bit. So kind of like on a hot day, if it's really sunny, we put on sunscreen. That mud or sand or dirt, it kind of acts like elephant sunscreen. And it also kind of acts like a bug spray. So if the bugs are just biting the dirt, they can't get the elephant. So although their skin is super thick, it is also very sensitive. So that's why you'll see them throw that mud onto themselves to protect themselves from the sun and from bugs. So a full grown elephant, like Jenny all the way back there, she can eat anywhere between 200 to 300 pounds of food per day. That's how much they eat, that's also how much they poop. If you do the math, that's what we like to call job security. Keeps us busy throughout the day. Do you guys have any guesses on what elephants eat? What do they eat? Apples. <laughs> I heard someone say apples. Yeah, Tucker's throwing them apples. So we can treat them with produce as kind of a special reward, so fruits and vegetables. These guys are herbivores, meaning plant eaters. 
So they'll eat the grass throughout their habitat. They have hay hanging in those nets back there that you can see. The most important part of their diet, however, is what we call browse. So these guys are naturally browsers, meaning in the wild they would knock down trees or reach high up in the trees and rip down the leaves, rip the bark, eat the bark, eat the branches, eat the roots. So the most natural thing we can give them are those tree branches. So we actually go about twice a day throughout the city and collect branches that people leave on their curb. So if you guys are ever doing any kind of tree trimming, feel free to contact the zoo to make a donation so we can come and pick up your branches to feed the elephants. So they eat a whole lot. So how many teeth does an elephant have? Any guesses? Throw some numbers out there. Two. Zero? No, we're a little higher than zero. 40, a lot lower than 40. We're looking for a single digit. Eight. Four, eight, right between there, six. So they have four molars, each about the size of a brick. Two on the top, two on the bottom of their mouth. They'll get six sets of these molars. So we get two sets, they actually get six sets of those teeth. And then they actually have two more teeth that are actually their tusks. Yes, those, t those tusks are actually modified inside their teeth. To put that into your perspective, that's your two front teeth. Ours are on the inside of our mouth. Theirs are on the outside. So those tusks are super important for elephants. They'll use them to scrape the bark off the trees like I was talking about earlier. If they can get their head low enough, they can dig in the ground with those tusks to find water or food. And they also can use them to do what we call sparring, which is kind of like a play fighting between them. So there's nothing special about what those tusks are made out of. However, one day someone decided to put a value on those tusks labeling it as ivory. Today, because of the ivory poaching, we, have, we lose 96 elephants every day in the wild. One every 15 minutes is lost. Unfortunately, by the time I'm done talking to you, we'll have lost another one. For nothing more than those two tusks on their face. We here at the zoo have a strong belief that the only thing that needs ivory is an elephant. So we strongly encourage you guys, if you're ever traveling abroad, or even in this country, and you find any souvenirs or trinkets that might be questionably made out of elephant ivory, we encourage you to just refuse them and buy something else for your travels. A lot of people don't even realize that America is the second highest consumer of illegal animal products including elephant ivory. A lot of people think it's a problem on the other side of the world, but it's right here at our own home. Oh, so you guys done. are doing your part just by being here at the zoo. A portion of every ticket sale goes towards animal conservation. So we thank you guys for being here. We encourage you to check out all the information inside the base camp there. And Tucker and I will be sticking around. If you have any questions, feel free to come flag us down. But thank you guys for coming.